Hi, today's video we're going to be bending this with a little bit of magic into this. I didn't think the curve bending would actually work with the small tools I've got, so I need some ideas. Comments, what is this? I'm hoping the intro to this showed a finished piece so that you guys can stick around and see what it's like. Wow, shed mark can go on. Anyway, let's get on with the build. So, outside, set up the table with the table saw. Test cut, don't know if it's deep enough, but it's certainly straight. And then I just went about cutting all the other ones. You'll find a great website linked in the description that will tell you the distance apart these curve cuts need to be and how deep they need to be to get the curve you want. Did that go well? I don't know. All honesty, I don't know. And a great tip, if you're doing both ends, just protect this end with some blue tape to stop it bending away from you if you're not supporting it. I've steamed these over two pans of water onto the back to try and loosen the fibre so when we bend it, it's not going to snap. That should be the exact width between the top and the bottom of the curve. So if I can get it to come round, this is what I'm going to lock it into place with. So now we bend. Not too fast, that's going to... Heard some snapping. All joking aside, I found this really stressful trying not to break the wood. Lots of little cracks. But anyway, once I got it to the shape, I thought, let's pop some glue in it. In every single curve, I filled up with Type Bond 3 and then moved it back into the position that I knew it could make it to because we'd just been there before. And then it was just a case of spreading the glue deep as you can into the curve and then just clamp it. I figured cleanup would be a pain later, so I tried to wipe as much of the glue out as I could at this stage. I didn't want to wipe it out the curves though, so I had to be really careful. And then I just did the other end exactly the same way. Okay, I found out I'd run out of the thin CA glue, so I've stabilized all of the little cracks just by putting a thick layer of it on and spraying it with the activator. Um, Hopefully that'll just hold them from splitting any further. I'm going to try and attack the curves that haven't filled. Now luckily, I'm a bit of a hoarder and any time I do some fine sanding, I go in there and I just collect up all the clean sawdust. And there it is. I'm gonna make my own wood filler up out of this with, with wood glue, mix it all together and I'm going to feed it into those grooves. So instead of the glue just disappearing, it will be held by the wood filler. Shit, Mark's on a bit of a roll right now. Uh, he's mixed up the, the wood filler and it goes into the gaps really nicely. It really goes against cleaning the glue squeeze out up earlier. But anyway, um, I just figured this would give it a lot more strength. Fingers crossed. I've made a right mess of the workshop, but this Hold on, folks, he's gonna is... tell us what it is. It's um, a... He's got no idea. I'm gonna carry on. If I'd have known that I was gonna actually get one to work to this extent, I would have probably taken a bit more time picking my wood and... The rest of that sounds like excuses. Let's just get on with tidying it up. Outside, with a chisel, bit of sexy close-up work, and we'll have all of that dry squeeze out from the super glue off in no time. That went so well, surprisingly well that I did it all again on a second one. I'll speed it all up so you don't have to watch it, but it is exactly the same. Same dimensions, same cuts. This is the bit that I'm most nervous about. Keep your fingers crossed. Hang on, hang on. Okay, they're crossed. Go for it. Check that out. What? Look at that. I am so happy with how that's turned out. This leads us to an interesting situation. Okay, so this was the experiment. And hand on heart, I had no idea that this was actually going to work. What are these? I just thought I'd try and bend some wood, which I've managed to do, luckily. Is it gonna be art? Is it going to be a standing shelf like this? I think this, if you can get to this stage of a build and make it into something that you love, change it, change what I'm doing and put from this stage onwards. Or put these together, glue them, and have them as a desk feature. Put your laptop on the top, slide your mouse and your keyboard underneath them. But the, here's the problem. If you were going to do that, you should have glued the wood together first, then cut the curves, then bend Okay, it. he's going to try and put them in weird and wonderful places again. Thank goodness, though, that he didn't decide to put them on top of each other. Like, take them off. That's it. Like that. Leave them side by side. 
With a sensible decision made to go side by side, it was just a case of jointing the edges, take off the rough stuff with a chisel and then square them off with a plane before gluing them together. I brought my camera down to the shed and I looked at what I showed you I'd made yesterday and I thought, do you know what? I'm gonna glue them together. It was still hot and anybody who does woodworking will know that glue, wood glue, goes off a lot quicker in the heat. I have ended up putting a lot of clamps on this. Lot, almost all of the ones I've got, to be honest with you. Because my idea is, I'll show you rather than tell you, but the first thing I'm gonna do is brave it and try and take these clamps off. You could make this again into anything you want. You could just make it into a monitor razor and there you are, you just finish it and you're practically done. I have a couple of things that I'm going to add to this. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just tidy this up a little bit so I can see what I'm working with. So I also had to fettle the little area that where they joined because they didn't join perfectly and I had to be careful not to show the kerf uh, marks through because it's quite a thin layer you leave when you cut through the kerfs. I still don't know what it is or what it's going to be. No idea. This is going to move this way, not this way. So it's gonna move outwards and inwards as seasonal changes happen. If I put something in that's got the grain direction that way, that's not gonna move with it, it's gonna stay strong and it's going to stop this being able to move and you're gonna get cracks, you're gonna get problems. Whereas if I put it that way, so put the two boards together, they'll all move in one, which is exactly what I want. Now that talk about grain movement might be a little bit confusing at this stage because I missed a bit out. Basically I laminated two boards together here and I'm marking off where I'm going to cut two pieces that are going to go through the middle of the two curved bits on the main piece. And I'm going to leave the middle of this section for the front drawers. It'll all become clear later on. Anyway, I just tidy up the pieces, glue them together to double the thickness so there's more structural stability there. And then I'm going to place them inside of the piece to give it extra strength and I had some ideas now where I was going to go with this. You'll notice the grain direction here matches so now this is what I mean when it expands and contracts it will do it with those pieces as well so there'll be no cracking. It was actually quite a relief to finally know what I was going to do with the two pieces I'd curved. The whole reason for this is to pull these sides up and up. Now, the one thing that I do need to do is put a brace support in from here to here so that the whole thing doesn't expand and that'll hold it all together nicely. I'm not entirely sure if this was necessary structurally, but I wanted to put a shelf in the middle. So both of those side pieces needed a dado cutting out of them, again back to the circular saw, and then I slotted in two nice pieces of beech for a bit of contrast. So there is the dry fit. And having a look at it, if you neatened up the inside of these curves with a scraper and some sandpaper, made a, nice, a better job of the finish on the shelf than I have, I think you could leave this with a couple of legs on it I think it's a really attractive piece. Me personally, I've got other plans for it. I just put a nice curved edge on the bit that was gonna be the bottom and then marked where the cross pieces met the top and bottom and decided I was gonna screw the bottom bit here so I had to countersink some holes. And then on the top, because I thought screws might look a bit messy, I thought better to put some brass dowels in which would look a lot smarter. I just got everything flush with my plane and then it was time to drill the screws through from the top into the inner pieces because I really didn't want those to be splitting as I screwed them.
I ordered the dowels in one long rod and then just cut them and just sanded the end to a nice rounded point. Bit of five minute epoxy, my biggest mistake, because if you think you can put 16 dowels in in five minutes, you are much mistaken, as I was. Anyway, a couple of different tries at that, and I just used this blade to cut them as flush as I dared. With blue tape is just to protect the surface. Filed them back a bit further and then finally finished them with the electric sander. Another mistake, because it does leave the wood with a few ripples. I needed a drawer, so I cut some oak down into strips and then into the measurements of a drawer. I'm not going to dwell too much on how to make this because it's fairly simple, it's just a box. But I used um, rabbits on the edges so that it's nice and smart and strong. And then a bit of crosshand chiselling, which isn't really recommended because it's not very good. Popped it together with glue and some oversized nails. Pin nails would have been much better in this scenario. But anyway, you use what you've got and it will give it extra strength, especially as I nailed the base onto it as well. If you've got the right tools for the job, you might want to countersink the base in there using some more rabbits. So I just put these really nice short drawer runners that I found on Amazon in and attached the drawer and it went in really nicely. I don't hate that. Ah, oh, it's good to see him happy. Anyway, here's the board we left the centre of earlier. Now, I left the centre because it was the nicest grain pattern. I just scribed through the piece that we were going to match the front to, cut it with the jigsaw into a rough size, and then slotted it inside of the curves with a little bit of fine tuning. I uh, stupidly didn't put my camera on, but what I wanted was two fixed panels, a continuous grain, and then the draw front in the middle. Seems to be a bit of a common theme in this, leaving the camera off at vital times. I gave everything a final sand and I did the same scribing to get a back piece out of a piece of 5mm plywood. Again, take it out with a jigsaw and then it slotted nicely into the back after a little bit of fine tuning. I then decided that it would look a lot nicer if I used some of my scrap veneer. I had some purple heart and some ash veneer. Now, a little bit of a tip here. You'll see me and you might say, why is he veneer in the back? I've learnt my lesson from this. If you only veneer one side, it will cup because the wood will contract like any wood does the veneer and it will pull the middle piece out of alignment. Really fiddly job, but the blue tape trick here really helps. Super glue on one side, spray activator in the other, and it just temporarily holds each piece into alignment. So I can then reach round through the back once they've all been aligned here, I can reach through the back and these little blocks I can put into place where they will hold the fronts tight against the sides of the box. Makes more sense when you see it from the front. I have to say this is one of the features that I love the most about this box. The fact that I've used one piece across the front, it sounds so simple, but with all those grain directions going in line across the entire front section, it makes it really pop. Everything got a good sanding down to 240 grit, wiped off the dust with a tack cloth and we we're on to the finish. I didn't want to bore you with watching me do all of the first layers of the lacquer. Now, the first thing you just need to make sure of doing is get all the dust off with a tack cloth, blow it off with your um, pressure down, whatever you're going to use. I use a tack cloth because it keeps it in one place and gets rid of it. Um, after that, it's a couple of layers of lacquer put in closer, if you like, probably six, six inches away, give or take. Um, again, I'm just using a spray can for this like I do on all my projects. One thing I would say is, this is where I will take your advice. I I'm noticing that it's not giving quite the sheen that I want and I'm a bit worried that lacquer 
if when we decide what this is going to be isn't going to protect the surface if we put anything on it so i will take some advice on this in the comments pop down how you would finish this so far i'm up to about three coats of lacquer and this will be my fourth and i'm going to do this in a way of a finishing coat so i'm going to give it a rub down and then i'm going to put the lacquer on top to finish the job but let me know if you would use something different you think it's more hard wearing or you think it's going to look nicer than this let me know because i'm always learning Last bit from me while Shedmark finishes off. There's going to be some links to some other videos similar to this that are about to hit the screen. If you've liked this, you'll love them. I am so happy with how this turned out. So until the next time, drop in the comments what you think it is, like and subscribe, and maybe by the next one I'll know what it is and I'll let you know.